So what we have here is a culture of men who are, you know, some of them are really masculine looking, but they've been emasculated to the point that they, you know, they, they dress effeminately, they have effeminate voices, and they cannot hear any contrary ideas without just being absolutely personally offended. All of us have been raised by a generation of idiot feminists. They never taught, taught them about gender dynamics, about differences between the sexes. They just taught them that men and women are the same. And so this generation of millennial men is, they're just trying to be kind and treat everybody equally like their mothers taught them, but they've become emasculated and therefore unattractive to women. Welcome to the Fallen Stage. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Remember, the Fallen Stage is now on Locals.com. So click the link in the description to support our work, and I do appreciate it. Uh, and also, you can become a member of the Fallen Stage channel there on YouTube to support us. And those who are doing it already, thinking about doing it, thank you. I do appreciate it. I have with me Rebecca from the Blonde in the Belly of the Beast YouTube channel. She is an online personality and co-host of the Matt and Blonde show. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I do appreciate you being here too. Um, and so tell me the purpose of Blondie in the Belly of the Beast. What is the right. purpose of that show? Uh, it is a kind of a leftover moniker from when I was living in Seattle. Um, I had this careerist trajectory in my life. And then when I moved to Seattle around 2014, 2015, I became, I was always a libertarian, but I became hyper aware, especially of the the gender situation in Seattle, because uh, it's it just started to get really out of control. Yeah. Um, and I was furious all the time. I was just walking around in a blind rage because people didn't seem to think that anything was wrong with the the city in which we were living. And then that year I went to Europe and that was during the migrant crisis. And it kind of uh, awoke me to all of these global issues surrounding immigration and, uh, and race relations and gender issues. Um, and I was just so irate all the time that I, I felt the need to get these ideas out of my head. It was, it was kind of a cathartic thing. Yeah. Um, and then one of my videos went viral and I was put in a position where I just could not be conventionally employed anymore. Uh, and that was just the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, I was able to just do my, my podcast and I met my husband and we have a daughter now and I'm just so grateful uh, for the complete destruction of my reputation because right of my on. YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I talk a lot about, I used to talk a lot about feminism. Um, my perception on that has changed a lot since getting married and having a child. And most of it right now is um, global issues. We talk a lot about foreign policy, uh, but people have been coming along this journey with me through the the genesis of being a constitutional conservative and now kind of losing hope in the American system. That's that's about where I am right now. Absolutely. You were a feminist at one time? I would never have called myself a feminist, but I was um, an unenlightened careerist engaging in, uh, you know, cosmopolitan hedonism. I was a, a rudderless woman without the self-awareness to realize that it was because because I didn't have a husband and family. Yeah. And so I was engaging in feminist practices like um, working and, and things like that, but I would have never actively called myself a feminist. Amazing. You lived in Europe, as you just mentioned, and now back in America, which is worse when it comes to immigration, the race issue, all these social issues that are happening. Is it worse in Europe or here in America? Sure, I was just traveling in Europe, but I have done, uh, pretty extensive traveling over there. Oh, okay. um, I think we are probably in worse shape here. Um, I know that the, this Muslim uh, migration crisis has really shaken things up in Europe, but generally they're still racially homogenous nations. And then they have kind of the luxury 
of being cordoned off by by country. But in the United States, um, the integration, I think it's uh, going to be a little bit more difficult uh, to unwind than, than it would be in Europe. Um, and then, of course, the the race relations between black and white people in America, they're just so bad right now, just yeah, terrible. Yeah. So I, I do think we're in deeper trouble. It, it's crazy and saying that human beings would fight over color. <laughs> and we have no, you know, we don't have control of our color. No one does, right? But they have allowed someone, the so-called leaders, to convince them to fight over color, mm -hmm. not knowing that they are being used while oh, the yeah. races are fighting one another. The people who are causing them to do it have encouraged them to do it, making money, they have perceived power, and they are controlling the people, but the people won't pull away from the craziness to see that they are being controlled. Yeah, I think that's a really important point because when people behave um, in their self-interest, I think everybody benefits from that because um, you know what is best for you. You know what's best for your yeah. in-group. And But when people are being controlled, you have a whole other element of subversion here. And I think that that is really the root of the problem. And that's why I think what you do is so important um, because you want the Black community to be self-actualized, to be self-determined. And that is such an important mission uh, for black people to know that, that white people are, they're not the enemy. They're not trying to destroy you. Well, not some white all. people are. <laughs> not at all. It's crazy. Um, why do you think adult men and women, not all, not all, but most, will not pull away and start thinking for themselves? And when you try to point them in the right way, they get angry at you for telling mm -hmm. them the truth about how to be free. Why do you right. think that is? Well, it's, uh, it's really difficult to look at your life and the components of your life and what you've been taught, your public education, um, sometimes your church group, things like that, things like that. Yeah. And, and realize that you've been lied to your entire life. It represents uh, such an incredible waste of time. And the worst part for people is that they feel stupid. They feel like they've been had. And so the instinct to just keep moving along the path that you've been moving along your entire life it's, it's overwhelming because living in the reality of the world that we do live in, it's difficult and it requires a lot of self-evaluation, which is, that's, that's hard for people. It's hard for people to look at themselves and be like, yeah. I'm faulted in this way and this way and this way. Um, because once you do that, once you take that step, then you have to fix those problems. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know, um, don't know how to do that. What a mess. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, there is an attack upon white people, especially white Christian men and women. And they have white people on the run right now. Are you, uh, when you're out and about, are you afraid? Are you concerned that someone may attack you for no reason other than being white? Do you worry about those things? Well, I, I used to worry about it in Seattle, but it was mostly because of my YouTube channel. Um, and then I moved to North Idaho where it's predominantly white. And so I just don't have any, any safety concerns around here. Um, would I worry about this if I lived in a city like New York? Y yeah, I think I yeah. would. I think I would worry about it. But in my life right now, it's not an issue. <clears throat> Why do you think white men, for the most part, not all, not all, not all, but most. Why do you, <laughs> think, why do you think they don't speak up? Why do you think mm -hmm. they are afraid to say, hey, I'm not your problem. I'm not your enemy. I'm right. not all these races and all that crap. You're responsible for yourself. Why don't white men speak up about those things? I think a lot of it is that they've been emasculated to a degree that is probably unprecedented in human history. So if you think about uh, white European men, um, they used to have all these values and these virtues that they were fighting for. They were fighting for uh, women that were raising their families and, and those virtuous women right. that were doing all these things for them. They were fighting for their country that they cared deeply about. They were fighting for their God. And what has happened, especially in America, is that those things, um, those value systems, those pillars of, of these men have been destroyed one by one until all that is left is uh, is a man's hedonism and his and his drive to pleasure himself 
at that at that exact moment. I think that women are the same way. Like we are a we're not a value driven society yeah. anymore. And so, in the absence of those things, um, why bother rocking the boat? I mean, I mean, why would you put yourself out there for your reputation to be destroyed, to be called racist or anything like that? If you just don't care about upholding any of these things anymore. I mean, these people aren't religious. They're largely atheistic. Um, they're, they're drinking and smoking weed all the time. And then the women that they're pursuing are, you know, sluts and they're not the makings of like a good mom. Uh, so what, what is there to fight for? Like, why would they come out and be like, uh, let's make peace. Let's, let's find ways to, they just want to, um, kind of be under this leftist, uh, cloak, of imperviousness where they aren't being attacked by people and they can kind of just do their day-to-day -day thing. What a slut, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what a slut. You, you were over in Europe, for, traveling over Europe, and I've mm. seen several reports of where the, the Muslim, the Allah U Abba people coming into that country as well, and they are attacking white women, raping them, mm -hmm. killing them, and and the white men over there, are they afraid to protect the women over there as they are over here? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Um, and I used to be so much more unsympathetic towards the Muslim position. <laughs> I can't even believe that I've, I've become sympathetic towards Muslims in the last few years because I was just full of vitriolic rage and hatred when I started my YouTube channel. But when I, I see the value systems of Muslim countries, I... I, I mean, I know that they're like real stone age, but they are right on some of these, th <laughs> some of these things. Um, and I'm really struggling right now with um, how to reconcile the way I used to feel about Muslims and Muslim men and, and how it's becoming more appealing to me because the Western world is completely out of control. And so that element of even staunch patriarchy, I'm starting to think like, maybe they're onto something. <laughs> like what for an example um you know i don't i don't want to be veiled or or anything like that but uh they do to some degree protect a woman's chastity and i think in our society that is a value that's that's become totally lost they clearly take it too far but there has to be some happy medium between veiling women and um, yeah. not letting them go outside the house or do anything like that and then this total free for all that we have here in the West. So I'm not saying we should adopt Muslim values, but like, can we nudge ourselves like a, a little bit in yeah. that direction? Like just a little bit? Well, it know. used to be that way in this country when in the good old days where women had a sense of self-control and men were the head of the women and they just right. wouldn't go out being sluts. <laughs> <laughs> it was that way at one time, but that has yeah. changed now because of the so-called <laughs> women's movement, women's right. lib, and all that crap. And they have convinced women that they need to be educated and they can be just like a man. So it's gone totally out of control, but the women are suffering as oh, yeah. a result of not being protected in that way. Mm -hmm. Right. And then uh, we're going to move back to that mentality. And we're seeing it now where women are demanding the protection of men, but we have no right to do that because we're not making the same offerings to men that we used to make. Yeah. Um, and you can only demand the protection of men when you're offering them your chastity, when you're offering them your abilities as a mother, when you're offering uh, the things that, that men cannot do to a relationship. So, you know, with long-term fidelity and things like that and, and submission, which is a huge problem for me. And I think that younger women um, should try to learn how to be more dutiful. It's not really been easy for me. <laughs> yeah, well, you're right about that. Um, what is a man? In modern society? Or what is my ideal of a man? Yeah, what is a man? Um, outside of the gender stuff, you know, a, a man has a penis. I think that uh, <laughs> um, a man is... Um, Somebody who sees himself as the leader of a family and he takes those responsibilities seriously. I'll keep it concise. All right. Are you, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? I'm Catholic. You're Catholic. Mm -hmm. And you, you said that you're married, right? Mm-hmm. Nice. And how long have you been married? 
Uh, five years. Right on. Are you going to make a truckload of white babies? <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> we need a truckload of them. <laughs> so stay busy. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And do you obey your husband? Uh, it's it's really difficult for me. I have this um, I have this independent streak that I I cultivated by with through my career, and so I have a really hard time doing that. And it was really difficult dating for me because I only wanted to date a man that was more dominant than I was. Yeah. But because I had developed this really dominant personality, it left just this tiny percentage of men that I could even be attracted to. And I put myself in that position. Um, but I have always kind of been like that. And so if a woman, I, I always wish that I had a more sweet and docile personality, but, but I just don't. So. <laughs> And so how, how does your husband deal with that dominant personality of yours? Because he's, he's more dominant than I am. Oh, and um, I'm very neurotic and he has <laughs> virtually no neuroses. And so I, I just try to listen to him. And when he lays down the law, um, I listen, but I, I just like compulsively push it. <laughs> I'm just, I do the shit test and then I realize what I'm doing. And then, you know, it's be, being a, a red pilled woman is also a difficult thing because you see in yourself all these qualities that you hate in women. Um, but it is so hard not to allow them to manifest. And so even though I've been doing this, uh, my YouTube channel for years and years, I still catch myself doing this stuff in my marriage. And I'm like, stop. Like I, I, I can't do stuff like this, but there, there must, must be some kind of biological mechanism that, that <laughs> makes us this way. I don't know. It does lead to a certain degree of self-loathing though. Does it feel like <laughs> something is controlling you and causing you to think and act out and you're not in control of it? Um, no, I mean, I don't want to act like I have no autonomy, but my behavior like that it feels like I'm behaving like an impulsive child. Right. So like I have less <laughs> impulse control than I should as an adult. Um, that's how I feel with my behavior. Uh, so, you know, I really try to like be aware when I'm nagging or, you know, when I'm doing these typical female things and that helps me with the behavior. But like, it's just incredible to me that I still do things like this. It, it really does make me hate myself, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it every day. <laughs> um, did, did your husband know you were like this before he married you? Yeah. yeah oh, he already knew it. So you didn't yeah. hide it from him or anything. Nope. There was, there was no hiding it. It's just part of my personality. And then just right away, you know, I was like, this is what I'm looking for. And so it kind of helped us be on the, on a serious trajectory, like, right from the get go. And then when you're really neurotic, I don't, I don't know that you can really hide that from people. <laughs> <laughs> Did you become like your mother? Um, yeah, I think that I, I definitely do things now that, that I'm like, that's mom, that's mom. Yeah. But, um, she used to say when I was growing up, like improvement, multi-generational improvement. So you want to be better than the previous generation, better with every single generation. So I think about that. I'm like, I don't want to be totally unlike my mom. I love my mom. She's, she's a wonderful woman. Um, and when I see flaws in my behavior, I just think like, I'm going to do better than my mom did. And she did better than my grandma did. And, and then hopefully my daughter will do better than I'm doing. And that's, that's pretty much all I can do. Have you forgiven her for recreating you in her image? Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. You yeah. told her that? I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you tell her you're sorry for resenting her for recreating you in her image? I don't, I don't know that I resent her. It's, mo it's more that I, like, I resent myself. And the kind of things that I saw in her behavior, it wasn't things specific to my mom, but it's, um, it's like broader female traits. Uh, and I, I do think that every woman it becomes like her mother, but I'm not sure how much of that is because it's her mother or because we all share some of these undesirable traits. Well, it's 100% um, because of her mother, because when you were a little girl, your mother imposed a will on you and, and it made you angry. 
as a kid and no one told you, hey, don't, Rebecca, don't be angry. She can't help it. Don't resent her. Because when you're angry, you become like whomever caused you to become angry. And that's why you light her. And once you see that, especially now that you have a family, you go and, because she did the best she could. She couldn't help her. Her mother did it to her. And it just goes on from generation to generation. But if you go and just say, hey, mother, I'm sorry for resenting you. I know now you couldn't help yourself. And God will forgive you, and he will, give, he will take away that angry spirit, and he, he will give you back Rebecca. And so when you deal with your daughter, you will pass on only love to her, and she will not become like you. Well, she'll be like the same spirit, which is of love instead of anger. Then yeah. you will be yourself and not anything like your mother, and you will love your mother with the right kind of love. That's good advice for raising my daughter because I, I do see some undesir- uh, some of my undesirable traits in, um, in yeah. her and she's just a toddler. And yeah. I've been thinking, you know, I want her to take the good from me uh, and, and to leave the bad behind. But it's, it's hard to do that when, uh, you yeah. know, I embody myself. It's hard, it's hard to know what behaviors are reinforcing the negative traits that I see in her. But I can promise you that if you forgive your mother, don't ask for forgiveness. God will forgive you. He said that, go and forgive, and I will forgive you. He will take away that false identity that is from your mother and give you yourself because your daughter will end up being like you, and she's not going to like it. But if you are of love and patient, she will love and appreciate that, and you will have a relationship that would be perfect with your daughter, and you will never have to worry about it. But you got to oh, forgive. That's such good advice. Thank you. And you got to forgive your mother uh, in order for that to happen. And if your mother say, oh, daughter, I'm so- okay, you're right. I'm sorry. That's nice. And if she doesn't, that's nice. God will forgive you. And you will still love your mother with the right kind of love. Mm-hmm. Yep. When you were growing up and you were asking your father to help you deal with your mother, what would he say? Would he help you? Or what would he do? Wow. I don't know that I've ever done that. Why not? Uh, to ask my father to deal with my mother. Um, I don't know. I don't know that I've ever done that. Yeah, I can't think of a time. And why did you ask your father to help you deal with her? <sighs> I don't know. I think I was, uh, as a child, I was um, pretty acutely aware of my role. And so I just let my parents deal uh, with any issues that they had or parenting issues, I just uh, kind of let them deal with it. Were you close to your father? Mm-hmm. Yep, we're still close. And my have, parents are still together. And I'm, I'm close with both of them. Have you forgiven him for not protecting you from her? Wow, you got a lot of... My mom's going to watch this later. I'm, I'm sweating. <laughs> 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 no, my mom, my, she was a good mother and, and no she protected No such thing me. as a good mother. What? There's no such thing as a good mother. Oh, God, how do I get out of this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking well, for the door over well, here. Well, what's going to happen to you once you go and forgive your mother? God will forgive you, and his spirit will work through you, and you will be a good mother. Okay. Because you won't have that angry spirit. So we, yeah, I, I do have a lot of anger. I'm, I don't know that it's from my childhood or anything like that. No, I, just... I promise you it is. Ah, <sighs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just think about it. Once the show is over, reflect. And don't just believe it because I said it. You're going to see that anger came from your mother. That's why you're just like her. And you don't want to be, but you can't help it. You don't want to be impatient with your daughter or Mm -hmm. your husband, but you can't help it because that angry spirit is driving you. Right, right. But once you forgive, God will take it away from you, and you're going to be fine. You will have perfect patience with all people, including yourself. I I will say that I have... um much, a much greater reserve of patience for my husband and daughter than I do for people in the general public. Well, you have it for all people. You'll be able to speak up. (laughs) You'll be honest, but you just would be patient. You'll be of love, real love, Uh, just passionate love, not passionate love. Passionate love is not of God. It's of your daddy, the devil. So tell me, how do you, how do you attain this kind of patience with people that are actively trying to destroy you. That's, that's really what I, what I struggle with. Most of my rage uh, is towards these people that want to destroy my way of life, want to destroy my community, things like that. Yeah. And I just have no tolerance for these people. 
what's going to happen when the spirit of anger is taken away from you? You're going to be able to see. You're going to wake up. The light of God is going to wake you up. And it's going to cause you to see what's going on with you. And then seeing what's going on with you will cause you to see what's going on with others. And you won't resent them. Mm. You speak up, you deal with them, but you would be totally patient because you would see that they're angry and they can't see. They're being driven by a spirit that they don't understand. And you will be honest, but you won't be afraid. You will have perfect patience. It'll be well for you. You'll be protected by good. And the evil that's in them will not be able to touch you at all. Oh. But you got to overcome the anger. Anger is of the, your father, the devil. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I but, do carry a lot of anger, so I, I will yeah. take these words to heart. It's not going to change though, until you forgive mm -hmm. your mother. Okay. It started with her. She did the best she could. Her mother did it to her. And so mm -hmm. she couldn't help it. She didn't want to be that. She didn't want to impose on you like that. But she could not help it. Just as you can't help yourself, your mother could not help herself. Right. right. And you yep. wouldn't want your daughter to resent you over things that you could not help. Something else controlling you. Right. Likewise, oh. your mother don't want you to resent her for things that she had no control over. She had no control over that. Right, right. Yes, it would just break my heart if my, my daughter carried resentments towards me. Well, you got to get rid of that spirit so that she won't. Okay. And you got to forgive your father for not protecting you from your mother. He can't handle your mother. He's married mm -hmm. to his mother. He married the woman that he hated. Wow, she's going to hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I expect an angry call in, in an hour. I, I, I know I did a pretty good job. But I do, you know, in, in terms of... Um, of growing up and, and living in the house that I did, I, I really feel like my mom did a good job of instilling certain quali qualities of empathy. She did the best she could. Why yeah, do you think she sure. won't like this conversation? Um, I just don't want her to think that I, I blame her for anything. But she uh, is to blame. It, it, I think that the struggles that she had as a mother are struggles that all mothers have. Yeah. So she is to blame when you were a child, but you are to blame as an adult if you don't deal with it and overcome it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So forgive your mother. Okay. <laughs> I will. <laughs> um, so will you forgive your father too for not protecting you from her? Yes. Oh, good. It's going to be hard because you live in your imagination right now and the spirit of the lie is going to tell you, oh, don't talk to your mother like that. You're going to hurt her feeling. She got feelings. She's going to feel like she's a failure. She's going to get angry or whatever. And it, the spirit of Satan is wicked. In the imagination, wicked spirits, right? He's going to try to talk you out of it because he wants to control you. And he doesn't want you to be free. He knows that if you went and forgave, he would no longer have control over your emotions, your imagination and emotion. So he's going to try to talk you out of it. You're going to hear that voice talking to you. It sound like your voice. But it's the spirit of evil. Don't give in to it. He doesn't want to lose your soul. Do you believe that forgiveness is the heart of freedom? 100%. Because okay. what happens is when you forgive others, God will forgive you. And he will change your heart from anger to love. Real love, not emotional love. And then he's going to destroy the spirit of the devil that made a home in you when you became angry. And you've been thinking all along that it's you, but it's not you. It has never been you. Those are not your thoughts. Those are not your emotions. You are not your body. You are a spirit that lives in the body. But Satan made a home in the mind when you became angry. And no one ever told you, Rebecca, that's not you. Don't accept it as you. And you've been thinking all along that it's you, but it's not you. But it, the love of God will destroy the darkness of the imagination. Um. So I have a lot of married friend couples um, and, and a lot of relatives that, that have been in long-term marriages. And I see this a lot, but an inability to forgive, but that, that unforgiveness is based on a legitimate grievance. What should people do in that situation? Like if there was, I don't know, I, I know a few people where there was infidelity and they tried to work it out or um, financial betrayal things like that. So, so the woman or the man has like a legitimate grievance of the spouse, uh, of the other spouse. They've decided to work through it, but there is still a, a really bitter 
lingering resentment? Like how do they achieve that kind of forgiveness? First, they got to realize that there's never, ever, ever, but never, 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 ever, 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 any reason to ever be angry, to hate. So you, uh, once they realize that, then they will forgive and whatever happened, they will forget it. Because to forgive is to forget, right? And once they forgive, they will go free. There's never a reason to have anger. There's not one thing. A woman can be raped in 10 cars at one, in one night. She cannot hate it if she want to be free. Because the moment she resists it, she becomes attracted to what she hates. And even if she left one man, she'll look for a man that's going to rape her or be mean to her. But if she didn't hate it, that doesn't mean you're not going to take the right kind of actions against what happened. But when you hate it, you're controlled by what you hate. And that person can control you the rest of your life or someone like that with the same spirit will control you. There's never a reason to hate. So you have to make the active choice to forgive. Yes, you have to see that you're wrong for judging your fellow man no matter what. Because as, when you judge, you'll be judged. What you're doing to others, you're really doing it to yourself and not to them. There's right. never a right. reason to hate. I do see a lot of people that are deeply wounded, uh, but also extremely angry. And they use that that anger um, to kind of cover up how hurt they are. Yeah. Well, in that situation, when they feel like it's their only protection, uh, what can they do to release themselves of that anger and resentment? When they had to realize anger is not your protection. Anger is your enemy. Anger is evil. There's no love in it. It's of your father, the devil, and he controls you through thoughts by reminding you of the past, which doesn't exist. Whenever that incident happened, it happened then. It's not happening now, except in your mind, which is illusion. Then it reminds you of a future. Oh, you're going to have a better future tomorrow, setting you up to be disappointed. So you're up and down in emotions and thoughts, and after a while, you want to commit suicide. Uh, so there's... They got to let it go so that they can be free. Huh, that's interesting. That's interesting commentary about the past. That's been a, a huge struggle of mine, like living in the past, living in the future, because they say anxiety uh, is, is either you living in the past, like fear of, of what you've done or fear of things that are going to happen in the future. And it just uh, it robs you of living in the present moment. Do you believe, think, do you believe there's a past or a future? Well, I don't know. I mean, having a child has totally changed my perception on the past and the future. Um, I was a horrible alcoholic when I was living in New York City. It was just, I was at the bottom of a bottle. Uh, and for a while, I was just living in so much regret. How could I have made that decision to um, to drink so much and to live in that way? But then I I realized once I had my daughter, if any one thing in my life was different. If any one thing, no matter how small, what if I was living in a reality right now where I didn't have my daughter? And like, just that idea that, that all the roads in my life lead to Emmeline, um, it, it sort of absolved me of my alcoholism because it was the mistakes. It was the triumphs. It was all of those things that led me to this perfect child. And I just don't want to live in a world where I'm not her mom. Yeah. I don't want to live in that world because it's just so important to me. And so I think that that just changed the entire way that I view that I view the past and the future because what I do now, it has to be for her. So do you believe there is a past and a future? I'm not sure that I believe that there is a, a future, a, a concrete predetermined future. Um, I do believe in the past. The past turns people into what they are now. Um, not that we can trust our recollection of the past, you know, the, the memory, it's fallible. And so um, where is the past? I mean, it, it lives within us, I think. But um, I think that people can change their behavior and, and change who they were in the past. There's not one person walking this earth, nor there has ever been, nor will there ever be a person that can change themselves. It's impossible. But they can change their behavior. They can't change their behavior. They have to go from one bad behavior to another one. 
Well, what about self-improvement? Do you think it's impossible? It's impossible to improve self. We are not in control of anything. Only the ego makes you think you're in control, which is the nature of the devil. And the more you try to change yourself, the worse you get. You may stop being an alcoholic, for example, but you become another kind of holic. You try to be nice, which is evil, and you're not happy being nice. You try to be me, you're not happy. You can't change yourself because it's spiritual. It's a spiritual battle. You know, you're really the- cutting me to the core here. I think you're right, though, because um, <laughs> I have been struggling with Catholicism and and with my faith, mostly because I don't understand the nature of human suffering. Yeah. Um, and and I'm struggling with that. And and I am desperately struggling with giving control up to God. And control has been a huge problem in my life. So you're you're absolutely right about the the nature of addiction because. After I had recovered from the alcoholism and everything, I developed incredibly intense obsessive compulsive disorder, yeah. which um, manifested in me like really fixating on the on the health of my child, on my health, things like that. I mean, it was just another way for me to try to control. Yeah. And I struggle every day to give that control to God. And I am bad at it. And I, I fail every day. Like, I do not know how to do that. The way you do it, you want to know? Of course. The way you do it, you got to see that this anger that you have is evil. Uh, there are spirits that, that are wicked that made a home in your mind, not in you, the real you. You're not your thoughts. You're not your feelings. You're not your body. But it controls you through your mind, and it controls you with anger because anyone that has anger is evil, and you're being controlled by the spirit as spirits of evil. And that's why you can't make anything work. You will never be in control. You never will, right? And so if you want to be helped by the love and the truth of God, you got to let go. Stop trying to change this thing, but see that it's there. Yes, I do have anger. Yes, I am out of control. Once you can see it and don't judge yourself because it's not you, then God will take control, especially when you go and forgive. He's going to take over, and then you shall know God. You shall know his love, and you shall walk in his light. But as long as you're trying to change it, you're worshiping the devil. You're, you're digging a hole for yourself. You cannot change it. you got to let go and let the change happen. That's the only way it's going to work. Oh, wow. What do you do about self-loathing? You got, that's judgment. You're judging yourself, and you... Not only can you not judge others to be free, you cannot judge yourself. You can have mercy on yourself by realizing that that's not me that's doing that. Why do I have these thoughts? I don't, how did, where did these thoughts come from? Those are not my thoughts. Where did these emotions come from? I would never make myself think something bad. I would never bring pain to myself. You got to stop identifying with that. And once you do that, you're going to stop judging yourself. And it's not you, but it's the spirit of evil that made a home in your mind. You're, you're really rocking my world to, a, to the core here. <laughs> you're not, there's no such thing as depression. There's no such thing as loneliness. No such thing as uh, suicide thoughts. But it's spirits that's in your thoughts that making you think that is you. And you try to do something about it. And that's what the problem is. You got to overcome the wicked spirits and you can't do that on your own. I promise you, once you forgive and see that it's something else controlling you, you will be fine. You will let go and let God. Let go and let God. I like that. But you got to let go of the thought. <laughs> you believe the thoughts and emotions, which is worshiping the devil. It's not oh, you. Oh, yeah, totally. I believe that I'm being led by satanic forces, especially in my OCD, because you get into this rhythm of... Um, seeking and thinking you'll find the answer. Yeah, and uh, it's not there. It's and not it's not the- there. That's exactly it. Yeah. So you got to work on you by forgiving your mother, because that's where it started. She could not help it. Forgive your father for not protecting you from it. He cannot deal with your mother. He's afraid of dealing with her attitude. He doesn't know how to deal with her either, and because he never overcame his mother. They both love you in the best way they can, but they don't have that real love because they never forgave. And once you forgive them, you're going to return to the Father, and life will become amazing for you. The, the emptiness that you have, the void, that 
thing that feels like something is wrong is really a longing for the Father. And, but the devil tells you that it's something else. Oh, if you get this, if you had that, if you had this, even if you had 10 babies, that emptiness would still be there until you forgive your mother and father. And then you'll turn around and go back to the father and you'll be fulfilled and it will be amazing. But you're longing for the father because your mother turned you away from him when she imposed her will on you. And that's what I'm doing. Absolutely. You're doing exactly what your mother has done. Mm-hmm. And you won't be able to help it until that spirit of anger is taken away from you. Okay. I think I can do this. <laughs> I, I do too. It's just you didn't quite know what it was. Now you know what it is. You know what you need to do. Most people don't know. Even the Christians don't know what it is. They read the Bible. They go to church. They lift up holy hand, but they're miserable. Oh, they, yeah. they are still worshiping the devil all in the name of Jesus. And they excuse it by not forgiving. They make up excuses to not forgive. God said to forgive. He, he, we are protected with perfect love. And the only way you're going to have that is you must forgive. So that he can forgive you and take that spirit away. And you would never have to worry about your daughter. Your relationship will last until death do your part with your husband. That's such great advice because I have been struggling with this, especially in my, my prayer life. Um, I've been, I've been treating God like a genie or something yes. like that. Like <laughs> I've been praying every day for the, for the things that I want. And, and, and I do pray to have a closer relationship with God, but I am wrapped up in, um, in the anger that I, I have towards him about my suffering Yeah, and it has made it impossible for me to develop a genuine relationship with God, like, cause I'm just pissed off all the time. Yeah. So I what, think you're right. Especially the, the heart, the heart of my problem is my anger. I think you're spot on with that assessment. All of your prayers have been to Satan and not to God. Oof. Oh, <laughs> everyone that has anger, pray to Satan all in the name of Jesus. Right. But they're not praying to, to God. That's why your prayers have not been answered. When you see that you're wrong for having this anger, God is allowing you to see that, and he's trying to draw you back because you can't see it for yourself. He allows you to see it. Once you see it and go and forgive, no more reason to be praying to the devil, and you're going to live in the presence of God, and all your prayers will be answered without even asking. Huh. Because you will have no problems. Okay, I have no problems, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and God has never caused you suffering at all. It, uh, it came from anger through your mother and through her mother and all the way on and on, right? So you have always been controlled by evil, never by God didn't bring you those problems. God is perfect love. He doesn't judge us. He doesn't give us problems. He doesn't test us. He loves us. So it's, it's not possible for him to do those things. And you will become like him once you forgive. Wow. What a revelation. And, and I, I do worry that I'm not capable of that level of forgiveness because I feel like it's my armor. And then I've been doing this for so long that I feel like my anger may have just become my personality. And that troubles me. Yeah. Well, that I've made an identity out of my anger. That's only because you have identified with it as though it is yours and it's not you. It's not yours. It's that spirit. But you grew up thinking that it was you. So you identify with it. And once you identify with it, it became yours. But it's not you at all. It has never been you. God has never judged you. The real you, the real Rebecca, has never done anything wrong. You're not guilty of anything. You're neither right nor wrong. You're neither up or down. This is false identity that you have identified with thinking that is you. Once all that disappears, the real Rebecca will come forth and it's going to blow your mind. Once you let that go, you're going to see the real Rebecca and you're none of the things that you've grown up thinking that you are. You've been deceived <laughs> right. in your imagination. <laughs> Just think Thank about it. That. If you were in control of that, if that was you, you would never do some of the things you have done. You will right. always do happy things. You will always have happy decisions. 
But you don't have that because it's not you. It's something else that made a home. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. No such thing as a true thought. Right. The ones that build you up right. is a lie. And the ones that tear you down is a lie. And you're divided. You're not one person. You're not whole. But once you let all that go, you become one person instead of divided. You'll be whole and again. That's the thing about evil, isn't it? That um, it masquerades as good. Yes. And it makes it so difficult to differentiate. Absolutely. 100%. Evil is evil, and it pretends to be God, and it's not. And so that's why I tell you there's no such thing as a past or a future. There's nowhere the past exists except in your mind. And it's evil that is telling you that the past it still exists. So it can keep you angry and afraid and worried. And then once you're in that condition, it tells you, oh, tomorrow it'll be better. And now you feel good, which is a false feeling. And when tomorrow comes, it's not better. Now you back down on yourself until after a while you want to jump off a bridge somewhere. <laughs> That's definitely true. Yeah. It's um, with all people. Not one person on this side of heaven is not dealing with that, but only a few are going to overcome it. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know how anybody hell. can get through life without, without some modicum of faith. Yeah. Right? Like, how can you even do it? Things would be so bleak. Yes. Um, my uncle also had OCD, but he was an atheist and, and uh, he could not cope with it. And he killed himself like yep. two or three years ago. Um, and I just think like maybe if he had had faith, but I also struggle with that because I, I feel like God doesn't give you more than you can handle, but he couldn't handle his circumstances. And that's why he committed suicide. Well, what it mean when you say God does not give you more than you can handle? When you, well, maybe, going, when you were going through the ego death, because once you change your heart to, from hate to love, you're going to then have to die from the ego, which is the nature of the devil. And that could be a heavy load sometimes because you're so identified with it. He will give you little of that so that you can deal with that, so that the ego can die and then you shall live. Just as Christ died on the cross, he had to go through the same thing. And so that's what you have to go through. And the light of God will cause the ego to death, to die, and it, would be, it wouldn't be more than you can handle. It's, it feel like you can't handle it, but you can. And how, So how do I kill my ego? How does one do this? By seeing that you have it by the light of God, and let it die. Will you, if someone, let's say that, let's say that you have a reputation as a TV host now, right? And someone tell you, oh, you ain't no good. <laughs> <laughs> you were born. And the moment you get angry about that, or if you feel embarrassed about it, feel the pain of anger. Feel that pain of embarrassment. Listen, let those thoughts and the feeling pass through you, and that's the death of the ego. If someone can make you feel a certain way, that's all ego. So you welcome that opportunity to see where you are if you're going to overreact or not. And if you do, let it pass, and that's the ego that's dying. But if you protect the ego, you give it life. You are not your ego. That's the nature of the devil. The ego must die, and you will live. So if someone say, let's say your husband say, oh, you're such a bitch. Has he ever said that to you yet? No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say he just said, you're such a bitch. And then you get mad about it. That's ego. Let that feel the pain. Be glad that he said it because it allows you to see that ego is still there because you don't want to think of yourself as a bitch, right? And you might be a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> And, and feel the pain. That's not you. That's the spirit of evil. Mm -hmm. And let it pass through you. It is dying. And then the next time he calls you a bitch, he will be moved by it because it won't <laughs> be who you are. That's true. That is kind of the nature of the internet, too. Things that used to really bother me, just nothing touches me online <laughs> anymore. Well, I'm that, sure you get a lot of that, too. <laughs> it would be like that in your whole life, no matter what happens. And you will lose the illusion that you're this person that you are. You're not, you're not your career. You're not this famous personality. You're none of those things. And your whole idea about everything are wrong. 
all those false ideas that you've been taught growing up, you've heard about, will all disappear. Even your ideas about God will disappear because all ideas about God is from evil. Satan has given you and everyone that's taught you about God. He told them that about God. It was from thoughts. It wasn't real. And so you have the wrong impression of God. And when God doesn't do what you think he should do, now you're mad at him. Now realize that Satan told you that about God. And Satan doesn't know God in that way. He's pretended to be God. Hmm. So all of your ideas would die with the ego. It's a part of the ego. Okay. And you will have a clear mind. And you will uh. know God. You won't just believe about God. Believing about God is intellectual. To know God is totally different. Okay. So my, asking for this in my, in my prayer life is not the way to go about this. It's about um, removing a sense of self. Yes, 100%. When this false sense of self disappear, you shall live. All your sense of self, your ideas about yourself are wrong. And they're wrong about other people, too, because you can't see right now what's driving them. When you see what's driving them, you won't have an impression about them either. You will see that they can't help it because the same spirit that's been driving you is driving them. And most people don't want to face it. They don't want to admit it. So you can't make them see it. Only those who want to see it will see it. Most people don't. They love their hell. They love their misery. They love to whine and cry and feel sorry for themselves. That's their hell that they're living in, and they love their hell because it feels like life. Even if it's a bad life, it still feels like life, but it's really death. Wow. What a mess. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we do live in a mess, don't we? We love our jail cells. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. They love their jail cell. If you tell them, if you open the door of the jailhouse and tell them, okay, y'all can leave. You are free. They won't leave. Right. They'll, they'll stay right there and be miserable because they love their misery. Oh, that's true. And then I've heard accounts of people that have been in prison uh, for extended periods of time. And they say, you know, I was never in prison because I was free in, in my heart and in my mind. Yes, absolutely. You're enslaved in the mind. And when your uncle committed suicide, it wasn't because of OCD, you say? Mm -hmm. It was because he thought those spirits, those evil spirits in his body and mind was him. And he was angry and he believed it. And they convinced him to kill himself that he wasn't worth anything. Look at your life. You're a drug addict. You're this. You're a loser. You're that. Nobody likes you. And you might as well take your life. And it sounds like you, you end up taking your life. But you listen right. to the devil. Because the last That's thing true. the devil wants you to do is to return to God. He doesn't want one soul to return to God. So he and his little demons work overtime to keep you from working, to, from returning to God. That's true. And it is, a, it is a struggle to return to God because I don't know that it's, in this world, it's not really our natural state. It's only a struggle because you believe that not you is you. Mm -hmm. If you didn't identify with the false self, you could be with God right now, right this very moment, if you didn't identify with that. But because you have identified, the struggle is in the evil. But if you can, I ask you something: Are yes. you afraid of death? No, you have no fear of of death. When you think about about the possibility of endless nothingness, it doesn't give you a, a an absolute panic stricken. I can't breathe. I am underwater feeling. Not no. one iota. Wow, that's incredible. You know why? Because death is just a word. It has no meaning. And then you believe the word death, and then Satan add all the meaning to it. Oh, what's going to happen to you? What, you go in this place or that place. He, you believe the lie again, a word. And the word is fulfilled by Satan. You think, oh, that is true too. And that's why you're afraid of death. Death is just a word. That's all it is. Do you have any fear in your life? I have zero fear. What a way to live. And you can live that too if you let go of the anger. Okay. You live this earth, paradise is right here on earth, right? Heaven is here, it's inside of you. Know thyself and you shall be free. You can live a perfect life right here on earth. And then when you do leave your body, you'll just be in perfect harmony with God. 
Well, I make a solemn vow today to try to let go of the anger in my life. You let go um, by forgiving and then let go of thoughts. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. No such thing as a true thought. Let go of the thoughts and you're free. Wow. That would be freedom, wouldn't it be? Huh. Well, this did not go in the direction I expected at all. <laughs> all thoughts are all <laughs> lies. <laughs> Have a way to see attitude about all things. Don't think ahead. When you're driving in your car or you're at work, keep your mind where your body is. Your body is in the present, but your mind will be thinking about the past or the future or what am I going to say? What am I going to do? Keep your mind where your body is. And you will always be in the presence of perfect love. You will be in the presence of God. He's in the present. He's not in the past or future. This would absolutely change every aspect of my life. Absolutely. Just, it would just change everything. Absolutely. I would be such a happier person, a better wife and mom. You would be at um, perfect peace. Happiness is a fate because happiness come and go. It's, Satan's still pretending to be God, so he gave you happiness. Christ came that we may have peace, and peace cannot change. There's no situation in life that can change peace. You want peace and not happiness. Okay. And happiness is based on something, right? Right. But, but peace is not based on anything. You want peace. I do. So another one last thing, then I got to put you on the hot seat because we're out of time. <laughs> what the? Uh, on, my, on my YouTube channel, I have a silent prayer, www.silentprayer.video. I want to encourage you to start doing that. I want you to learn to sit still, relax, and just watch those thoughts coming and going. You know how thoughts come and go? As mm -hmm. though you're watching a movie. You sit back, you and your family watching a movie. You're not in the movie. You're observing the movie. You're observing the movie. Right? That's what I want you to do with the thoughts so you can see that you're not the thoughts. Okay. So give it a try, all right? I will. So I got to put you on the hot seat. <laughs> okay. I, I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Oh. The hot seat. Have you ever dated a slut maker? Dated a what? A slut maker. Like an alpha A man male? that's a slut maker. No. <laughs> Is it better for a child to be raised by a single mother or a single father? Single father. Would you ever vote for a woman to become president? No. Is the earth flat or round? Uh, it's round. I'm sorry, audience. I'm sorry. <laughs> Would you rather date... Uh, would you rather date if you were single, a Jew, or, oh, I, I'm sorry. Who would you rather date if you were singer, singer, a Jew or a Muslim? Muslim. Is it better for a man to live with a woman if he's not married to her? No. Do we need more white babies? Hell yes. <laughs> what is a woman? A woman is a, a caretaker of men. Is America the best country on this side of heaven? No. Um, can a plus side model be beautiful? No. <laughs> if, if a husband cheat on his wife, should she should divorce him or stay with him until the kids are adults? Ugh, this is going to be unpopular. I don't know. I, I think I'd, I'd peace out in that situation. I. I would understand both perspectives. Does a chicken have lips? No. Did you tell Hoppo to beat me? Who? What? <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell Hoppo to beat me? You ever seen that movie, The Color Purple? No, I haven't. Oh, I think oh, I read the book. Oprah Winfrey said, you told Hoppo to beat me. <laughs> Um, did you have fun? Of course. I had a lovely time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on. I had no idea how this was going to go, <laughs> but I love the way it went. It has a life of its own. 
Thank you, Jesse. I really appreciate it. Have I said anything that you disagree with or not clear to you or not? No, this was this was a, a life changing discussion. Like I, I really am going to try. It's actually never even occurred to me that that my anger might be um, such a a great source of of sadness and lack of peace in my life. And I really am going to try to work on this. Nice. Well, back up here to help. Let me know. Thank you. Tell the folks how to get to your YouTube channel, your your radio, whatever you're doing there. Sure. I am Blonde in the Belly of the Beast on YouTube. You can check out my channel there. I also do a podcast called The Matt and Blonde Show with Matt Christensen. That's on his YouTube channel. You can find me on Twitter. I mean, I'm not banned as of right now, but I just got let off a five-year suspension. (laughs) And I am Blondes, plural, underscore, tweets, also plural. So check me out. All right. And thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget that the Father's Day is now on locals.com. So click in the link. The script is there to support, continue to support us. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to like, follow, ring the bell, all that good stuff. And you can also support us by becoming a member of the fallestate.tv there on the YouTube channel. Thank you. Let me hear from you. Thank you again, Rebecca. It was a uh, uh, joy talking to you. You too. All right. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.